question. How many people feel alive tonight? I can actually do some work with you, help you get into that state of mind. What I would do is I would create uh, what I call a triangle, where I'm actually speaking to the three points of the triangle as aspects of you, as voices of you. So we would be speaking to, let's say, the left-hand corner of the triangle, and that would be the one who maybe has an agenda who has an aspiration, who, who wants to find, you know, the right settings, the right people, the right things. I think it's a good way for you to get into the state of mind that you want to be in uh, for doing the filming. We'll have some fun here. I would ask to speak first to the one who has an agenda, the one who has an itinerary, the one who has maybe some goals. What are some of the things that arise for you as you have this kind of agenda or goal mm. in your mind? What, what would be some of your fears? Now, uh, besides fears and hopes, do you have any expectations? snow in Pennsylvania and then like I told you in Philly the forecast says rain and snow and there's a chance of that so let's say they do feel that it's okay to go through with the uh, game five of the World Series tonight I'm gonna ask now to speak to the right hand base which is also the transcendent the voice I'd like to speak to is the one that has no goals no hopes and no fears so just be with this voice for a moment. This is a voice you may not be that familiar with. You have no goals, no hopes, and no fears. Just see what it's like to be without a goal, to be without, without hope and without fear. All right, just stay there for a moment and just be there. This is a very meditative state. This is a, a Zen state of mind. Kind of silent, isn't it? You're having a Zen experience right now. Or you could say a Kerouac experience. It's even hard to speak, isn't it? Because you don't have any reference points. This is a letter from Jack Kerouac, dated April, question mark. It's a hasty connection on a busy day, I'm sure. Dear Mr. Eduardo White, what are you doing, my boy? In the past 10 days, I've written 86,000 words, almost finished on the road, and finishing it by Saturday night. September 11th, I think, with a question mark. He says, I don't know the date, and I nor care, and life is a bowl of pretty juicy cherries that I want to, one by one, biting first with my cherry-stained teeth. How? <laughs> Sir, if I am to understand 
that you're coming in June, that I am to understand joyously a coming of first-rate superior importance. And if so, remember the moment you get off the train. You rush at once to 454 West 20th and throw a pebble in my dusty window. To get drunk with me or never, to celebrate dull life, make the cherries dance, which is the Kerouac dance of life, right? As ever, your Copan, Jack. This is 1949. We're in the strangest of times now in which, I don't know, it seems like almost everybody is at least wanting to show how individual they are and how nonconformist they are, you know, and how unique they are. The joke is just like everybody else. And um, I, I think there's a problem today, personally, this is my feeling, that there's a problem today with way too much electronic media and not enough time spent alone in your room. You could almost say meditating, but but just spent alone with a journal, just letting your own thoughts arise without any iPod going or without, you know, always being hooked up to a laptop where you're watching millions of YouTube videos and you're on your social networking sites like MySpace and Facebook and all this. I think that it's very hard to have a unique identity and to really be rebellious when your mind is so occupied with all this external electronic input. I, I think you just need time by yourself, listening to your own intuitions, trying to really pay attention to your first thought, best thought, which I suppose is a Buddhist kind of idea. I learned that little phrase from Allen Ginsberg. But, but, you know, like as soon as you meet someone, listen to your intuition, you know right away what that person's all about. And just really pay attention to these, I don't know, uh, you know, like if you have an impulse to go down a different street, go down it and see, and it might change your life. You know, these are all kinds of surrealist and almost situationist notions. To me, situationism is built on surrealism. Terrorize, tear the sky, I peer inside, swimming in Milky Way, slip off my pride. Guns, there are plenty for sale, stop acting surprised. Baby's witness washes stars from their eyes, mass lies, mask the skies in motivation. Fear the people, next is unwritten mobilization. Days is pages, veins as deep as conquest. Hazes, faders ripping fire in progress. Floating in blue, empire don't sacrifice. Power pull us sideways, so don't be acting right. But forever is accessible, eternity's peace. But time in is mighty and the winds moving east kill fear the full picture's not just what we see pull the lid off it's different what toxins we breathe gotta shine and get light heal and move us along shot cold but it's real now let's get on you see haze catch you off guard like bad security my words so vicious they wake up and murder me harder than my spirit towards tomorrow's uncertainty breathless bars vomit it's the purge and perjury stolen so much now all we need is flesh and bone freedom and the melody take me take me home I wrote that with kind of the premise in mind that the truth is secret. It's like you're working every day to kind of discover what your truth is and discover how things are connected and how you can change things and how I can change things. And when I said forever is accessible, eternity's peace, I kind of want to say that everyone has the possibility of finding, um, I personally think people can find enlightenment in this life lifetime and people can um, 
you know, reach that that beautiful self where they, they're not worried about the shallow things. They're not they're not suffering physically. And I think that's possible um, that we could all attain that right now. But there's just so much in the way of that. And that was just me venting. And yeah, it's <laughs> just venting. That's what he said. Now, who's ten? Why are you worshiping it when it's just a piece of brass? You know what brass stood in the Old Testament for? Judgment. Judgment. When the people of God didn't look up, what did God do? God judged them and killed them. But those that looked up by faith, they were saved. And they were healed. You see? God does things to teach us so we can learn. The Bible says these things are written for our examples. Why? Because God wants us to learn not only from the victories and defeats, their mistakes and their sins. So we don't do the same thing. He said, destroy it. But Hezekiah trusted in the Lord. They call that, but uh, right down here, you go straight south. Yeah, and for him, road, for us guys. Right. But for over there, but you go on the Edgemont Road. But he wants to go you, to Harrison. Well, you can go to Harrison on that road. Oh. There's a Y over Why there. Why would you go to Edgemont to go to Harrison? Well, you don't have to go. To, to, there's a Y before you. A long time for before Edgemont. Yeah, that's and the one I'm on. That's okay. right, and that's the one you got to take and you go south. But now I haven't been over that road, lad, for cripes, 20 years, so I don't know. I can't remember. Uh, there ain't no sign. No. Now there, there's no sign on that road. One thing for sure is the new day is new. And today we are founded. And it's time. Just push. Let's go. Just jump. One step. One time. Right now. This dream is there. This day is new. We will grind on till we break through. So take my hand. We'll make our stand. And walk. Dive. Straight into. Tomorrow. One of the uh, house owners doesn't want you cameraing anymore. No. Drink it up, motherfucker! Drink it, boys! Motherfucker, drink! <laughs> wait till you're on the back of my motorcycle. Oh, I can't wait. It's gonna be a blast. It'll be even better when that thing's sold. We're gonna go cross country on it. Oh, are we? <laughs> yeah. I'm a, I'm a cowa. <laughs> Oh yeah, you'll be on the back. We'll go to Cali. Oh, yeah. I hope you boys like trashy bars. So all what? these folks up here who dance don't chug it. On the sixth day, God created man. On the ninth, he invented Jack Daniels. But on the tenth day, God stretched forth his hand across his mouth.
my life doesn't coincide with the uh, Christian philosophy, but and the way it does is that, um, well, I mean, really, like I feel I feel good when other people are having a good time. Like I would rather someone else be happy than me. And this isn't just Christian. This follows any good belief. I've seen the world and. The world's a really nasty place. I was a soldier for America. I, I've been in Kuwait and Iraq, and I was, uh, I mean, just bodies. I saw, no, 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 I mean, no, it's cool. Actually, the worst part about it, like, I'm gonna do a two-part, well, no, I'll just, You're just seeing, I saw dead, dead, dead Americans laying next to jet, dead Iraqis. Uh, I mean, that was like, I mean, I saw my Christian white brother. I mean, I don't want to bring religion into this at that point, but it was just having like, it was just sucked really bad to see just both sides of the fight there at the same time and it's just seeing it, having them both there in one image like there's one side there's the other and it doesn't add up to anything like the 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 fight over there it's just it doesn't it just doesn't make overall it just doesn't fucking register you know like i mean dead whoever you know it's just oh man it's just whack and sometimes I, you know, I feel that it's our fault for being there. Like those people wouldn't have been shooting the mortars at us. On the other hand, why are they shooting mortars at us when they're, they're knocking out children in the streets, you know? We're not the guys that took them down in the streets. I was trying to give them, I was giving them Snickers and Cokes and shit. They never had candy bars until I got there. It's such a crazy situation. Oh, so yep. Wow, that's a pretty dress there. I know, I'm gonna go home. What? What are you, what are you doing? I'm gonna go over to Wendell's. Why? That was funny. You're sleeping here. So you're putting, a, putting on a pretty dress to go hang out with some other dudes? I can skip there. Seriously, I know. Why don't you say please? I just kind of want to skip somewhere. I don't want to wait for you right now. Now let's take a look. This was here. Going to jump here. There was a bit of silliness involved here at the beginning, a bit of sentimentality, a lot of hope and a whole lot of seriousness that brought this matter together. And the concern is for the betterment of humanity. So we're adding a 2 to 12 and we get 14 and one and four added sideways produces a five, uh, which says that uh, uh, there's something of an outing to uh, a relaxed spirit to this uh, production. This is my mug shot, I'll put it over here. Anyhow, but uh, it does suggest uh, functioning like you're on a vacation, like you're on location or on a vacation and that the serious business of the matter has not yet begun.
how do you move freely between these two states of mind, which is the whole point of Zen. Zen is that flexibility or fluidity where you can move between your human state of mind and your being state of mind, or you can say you're doing and you're non-doing, or you're seeking and you're non-seeking, or you're thinking and you're not thinking state of mind. And the key is in the apex. So I'm going to ask in a moment to speak to the apex of the triangle, that point up here, that embraces both the doing and the non-doing, the one that has goals and the one that has no goals, the one that has fears and one that has no fears. Now just be for a moment and see what it's like to hold these two states of mind and to have them always available to you, always accessible, and that you can move freely between these two, doing and non-doing. See what it's like. So you're truly now experiencing what we would consider to be a very profound state of, of Zen. It's like a strong hit of acid. <laughs> See what it's like just to be, this is probably your first time to experience Apex. It took me about 35 years to get here. And you're here in a matter of minutes. Do you know what time we're DJing at? Do you know what time I'm DJing at? I don't care. I'll play whenever.
leave your message after the tone. Hello? Hey, what's up, man? All right. Yeah, how long are you guys in town for? Cool. So you're just in town. So I'll, uh... What time do you want to meet? All right. I'm just trying to figure out how I can find you. Well, we should check out, uh... Check out some spots, you know? Oh no! Hello. Uh, you guys. Wow, Tracy's here. How are you guys coming in now? Hey, Garth. Hey. Uh, a little bit. Uh, coming in. You can't go in the kitchen. Uh, it's a little bit early. I left everybody and went home to rest. My aunt said I was wa wasting my ta time hanging around with Dean and his gang. I knew that was wrong, too. His life and his kind. What I wanted was to make one more magnificent trip to the West Coast and get back in time for the spring semester in school. And what a trip it turned out to be. I only went along for the ride and to see what else Dean was going to do. And finally, also knowing Dean would go back to Camille in Frisco, I wanted to have an affair with Mary Lou. We got ready to cross the groaning continent again. I drew my GI check and gave Dean $18 to mail to his wife. She was waiting for him to come home, and she was broke. What was on Mary Lou's mind, I don't know. Ed Dunkel, as ever, just followed. Here are these graffiti guys again. See if I can try to communicate with them. Your tag name. Nopi. What? Nopi. How do you spell it? L-P-I. All right. Sweet. It's Kiro. I'm Kiro. Wow. Is that water down there? I don't know. It's pretty deep. If I miss, I'm a loser. Oh. <laughs> Look at this guy. Oh, you poor dude. The polar bear. What the hell, man? Oh, goodness. Now I see. Look at that. Sounds of birds. Yeah. Brown land. Wreckage. Wreckage land. Concrete land. Being in the car. This space. And to be driving with Kiro now in Detroit. This is the American dream. This is on the road. sound of grass and the sound of trucks. The mysterious sounds. Trees. Listening. 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 the sounds in space.
it's always an inability to face the now that creates the problem. If we're always trying to manifest ourselves in the past and in the future, because we have the inability to concentrate and to just be, be with the now. There will be peace and a sense of place if you can deal with the now. And if you can't deal with the now, you will constantly resort to dealing with the past and the future, which is full of illusion and totally ungratifying. You have to stop and look. You have to smell. You have to be there now. What was figured out centuries and centuries ago is that it's your way of looking at the world. It's trying to look at the world with fresh eyes. It's not letting your mind and all that it has learned and all that it has worried about. Think about what you are when you're sleeping every night. In the middle of the night, your mind goes free form. It doesn't attach itself to all of the worries of your life. It floats. It becomes amorphous. It frees itself. Sometimes it's so beautiful it hurts. Sometimes it's when the air is so clean and you feel so alive. It's like you don't want to drive through life like this. It's like you want to drive with your head out the window so you can smell better and see better and, and be part of the world coming right at you, like touching it. You're so alive that you're just reaching out to grab the next moment. That's what it is more to be truly alive. That's, what, that's the way we all need to try to live our lives. As if that every filter in the way is blocking us from the actual perception of nature and the unfolding universe in front of our eye, where we wanna break away all the lenses, stop the, uh, get rid of this windshield, get rid of my glasses, it just, immerse myself just like it's like you have to be in the air and part of it and let it, it unfolding right in front of your eyes that's what it is to me to feel it you know I don't want to be blocked at all and filtered out I don't want to be told how to think I don't want to be told how to see I don't want all my past learnings to dictate how I lo look at the world and experiencing nature I want it all of it blocked out and see it like a little kid. See it for the first time with fresh eyes, screaming, unfolding nexus of now. Yeah, yo. 
Spin it, spin it up, spin it up, represent the shot. By Rue, you know what I'm saying? MAP doing big things. You know what I'm saying? War and Peace dropping August, you know what I mean? We out here in Chicago getting it. We inaugurated, we all done made it. It's not for one, it's for all they hate it. The ones who paid the price, they left for devastated, socially persecuted. We assimilated, Obama commander in chief, leaving the group of slam my busy. Time to get busy, releasing the negative slaves that were home, did you miss me? You got dead in my soul, my culture kissed me. Barack broke this stop, watch me blacklist me. We all very wise, the Tyson fist me. No more smoke life, we got an expectation. Fuck the area, we about to run the nation. I, I, I don't care where you go in this world. You can go, I don't care, but I probably, most of the time, a black is more scared of a black than, a, than of another color happening to them. You know what I mean? It's the way it is in America, especially, you know, it is disgusting. And that's part of the self-destructive cycle that's beneficial to the machine. And when I see to blacks, and, I, and that's not a color, that's a state of mind. You understand what I mean? A mind of the suppression. Good and bad is actually perception. Because a tiger that's eating a calf, of course we look at it, it's bad, but you know, that's what he was here for, to eat. We think life is evil and good. That's that one point of now that man doesn't really want to accept. And that's why it's easy for us to go into religion and have faith and blah, blah, blah. You know, you, you know what I mean? That's, that's kind of crazy, with it, but life is opposite dynamics, always in conflict. That's what life is. And, and, and that's why we don't want to live in that now because we, always, we know something's got to die. You guys can stay if my dad says yes. Okay. Cool. Dad, I gotta cook for grandpa. Yeah. Put him out. Hey, mom. So look, I'm gonna leave the the turkey bacon, the eggs, some apple juice, and some like wheat toast or something. Huh? It's on the stove. Okay. How are we gonna stand? To stand over here. Now, what are, what are we what are we talking about in this song mainly? Guns. Okay. Yeah. And and because we don't want to hear them, right? Yeah. yeah. Now everybody yeah. in the, we've heard gunshots in this neighborhood, right? Yeah. yeah. You've yeah. seen people. You, you shouldn't have to see that. And how does how does your friend act who walks around on the walker in your classroom? We gonna all help him walk again, right? Cause he learning to walk again, right? He getting better, right? All right, let's do it. I'm gonna run this beat. Ready? And I need you loud, Bryce. I need you loud and strong, all right? Because we don't want to hear the gunshots in this neighborhood, right? We don't want to know about that stuff, right? God, you know I got to tell you the truth. I like guns. That's what's keeping us broke. I like guns. That's what's killing the youth. I like no guns, no guns, no guns. Let me tell the truth. Can I be bored? I ain't no kids that got shot. I'm only 10 years old. I know a kid is five now. Got shot at three. But he gon' walk again, went to the G-O-D. But this, he should not see. Like watching R-rated movies on TV. Why you let this happen, I don't understand. Why you let the devil come in this land? I'm like, guns. guns. You know I gotta tell you the truth. I'm like, guns. That's what's killing you. I'm like, guns. That's what's killing you. I'm like, no, no guns, guns, no guns, guns, no guns, 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 guns. Guns, you know I gotta tell you the truth. I'm like, guns. That's what's keeping us focused. I'm like, guns. That's Come on. what's killing the youth. I'm like, no guns, guns, no guns, no guns, no guns. Guns. I kind of see myself being kind of like anti-social, withdrawn from society because I feel like I, 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 I know the truth or some of the truth. You know what I mean, uh, and, and that I feel like you know most of most of the people walking around are fucking 
prefabricated or they they just they, they're just like you know what i mean they're not they know the truth and they're not gonna stand up against it they just accept it they become you know so i like and i i think i stay i try to stay away from people that accept that shit mainly you know what i mean and most of society is 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 conforming so that that leaves me out of the out of the loop <laughs> you know what i mean that leaves me out of the loop call me a neo-pictorialist. The pictorialists were the fuzzy-wuzzy photographers. I believe in chance of when you're first loading a camera, those pictures that you took, sometimes it'll show the shoes or the texture of the ground through an arch and a boat in the ground. And they'll be some of the most brilliant pictures that I have. And it's then when I put the camera up to my eye to take the picture, it's another boring picture. <laughs> there you go, baby. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about chance of race. Right? <laughs> <laughs> If there's whiskey back there, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do a whiskey, see if it'll snap my brain into... Andy Warhol used to say to me, uh, you're so fun when you have drinks, it's just too bad that you can't be like this when you're straight. <laughs> that's how, that's how... Oh, shit. I'm sorry, I'm tired. Need a towel. I can't let that go to waste. All photography is a lie. Since it's been in the public domain, just in the premise itself, it's it's a lie. We keep using it as a document of fact. And so you have to ask how much of a fact is it? What will be then the truth? Well, John Balasari gets closer to that. John Balasari says, when you put the camera to your eye, you've ruined the picture. So in theoretically, a photograph is potentially a lie 
as soon as you're empirically going, I'm going to show them this situation. So the things that are the most beautiful come out of a random chance that you can just capture and show. And that journey of living for the moment, that hunt for truth. If you can let yourself go to chance, magic happens. And the more chance you allow into your life and let yourself live for the moment on certain things, you will have a, just a, in my opinion, a far richer life. But we live in this society that you want everything safe and insulated and controlled. And that you're safe and you have savings accounts and just everything is all set. And I've lived my life right on that edge, just loving right on that edge of looking, looking at the abyss right just about to fall into and to me that's life death is is to me personally uh i've come having a life-threatening disease uh finding i was hiv positive has made me encounter this whole subject uh, much more intensely. Um, once you've confronted it and you have these revelations of a new way of looking at life, once you realize that you might have a very short life and then kind of a rebirth into your living again when when you find out that you're not going to die right away. Uh, now, I've set aside death in my mind. Now, I'm back almost like teenagers are. I can live forever. We're getting close to home sweet home. <laughs> At those openings, Allen Ginsberg would be there. He would give me this look like, get out of here. Get away from me, you know. He was really not wanting me doing portraits in his portrait scene. I got axed out of Ginsberg world. Uh, did you ever meet Kerouac at all? No, I missed, but uh, met Neil Cassidy. Scared me, little kid would be like me now, hippie, blue cowboy boots, beat up Cadillac, raging drinker, uh, ang sort of angry, noisy. <clears throat> gas station with the nozzle still attached to his thing and caught fire and exploded. No way. People like saw it happen? Um, yep, yep. I'd like to see gas stations explode. That'd be good.
<laughs> Here, come on out. Whoa. <laughs> Just experienced the Colorado tornado. <laughs>